Great, thank you very much for this nice round table of friends discussing a very practical topic. So perioperative chemotherapy for colorectal liver metastases. Let it be known and let it be said that one, I don't have any disclosures except that I am not a huge fan of perioperative chemotherapy for <laughs> metacritus lesions that present in a long disease-free interval. So it's not really a question of if chemo, but when chemo. So why not up front, like so many other cancers? Why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you want to assess the biology? Why wouldn't you want to optimize resectability, preserve the parenchyma, and acknowledge that you can minimize the chemotherapy-associated steatohepatitis? And then are you worried? Or are you worried about disappearing colorectal liver metastases? Don't worry about those. And then are zero resection margins? Don't you like those? So first, let's talk about biology. Let's go back to the previous century, 1999. Clinical risk score for tumor recurrence, one point each. If the patient has nodal disease, the disease-free interval is less than 12 months. If their CEA is greater than 200, if they have more than one tumor, if their largest is greater than five centimeters. The patients that I care about are the ones that range from score of two to three, where there's a precipitous drop in their survival at five years. And even more so now, when we have uh, excellent systemic therapy options that these patients are living significantly longer, but that precipitous drop, whether you use the Fong score, the Nordlinger score, or a variation of each of these, that population is really who you need to target for neoadjuvant chemotherapy. So. Biology, again, there are a slew of first-line uh, bevacizumab phase three studies in metastatic colorectal cancer, but what I want you to leave from here today, Folfoxiri with bevacizumab or Folfox with Bev has a objective resist criteria response rate, 60 to 65% or maybe 60% with Folfox or Folfiri and Bev alone. That's real shrinkage. That is tumor shrinkage. If you're really gonna talk about biology, Let's get nuanced. What if you have a patient that has a KRAS, um, uh, 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 a KRAS wild type tumor? Should you offer them neoadjuvant chemotherapy? This data just was published last year in Lancet Oncology, the new EPOC trial. Chemo versus chemo with cetuximab in a neoadjuvant fashion for resectable colorectal liver metastases. In, in this patient population, you hold the chemo. You hold the chemo in this population because if you give patients chemo, their, their survival is compromised. And this was not accounted for by surgical complications. It was not accounted for for, for, chemothera uh, for chemotherapy complications. So if you're gonna do it, do it right. Don't give patients with KRS well type disease uh, chemotherapy with um, an EGFR antibody in a neoadjuvant fashion. What about the V600 BRAF mutation population? This group, they've got it worse off than the KRAS mutant populations. Do we have anything in the future or in the pipeline for them? Well, the Beacon trial data came out and uh, was, was uh, further um, uh, uh, discussed at ASCO last year. The progression-free survival for doublet therapy with engorafenib and cetuximab was better than uh, irinotecan or fulfiri with cetuximab. And if you look at the overall survival, it was 9.3 months. This is in the metastatic setting. So the question is, will this doublet therapy be what's next for patients with BRAF mutations uh, in combination with systemic therapy? So there's hope uh, in, in, the, in the horizon for this population, um, uh, and I'm, I'm excited to see, to see what transpires. So what about number two, optimizing resectability? Well, what if you have a patient in front of you that the lesion cannot be resected to negative margin? They included in this study technically resectable, I'm sorry, technically unresectable or with greater than five metastases. In my institution, we throw in a pump for those patients. But in this circumstance, uh, anti-EGFR therapy should be used for unresectable metastatic colorectal uh, cancer. Why? Well, the objective response rate was 62%, 70% for patients with KRAS or BRAF wild type. And the R0 resection for this population was 34% of the overall population. And of those that were initially deemed technically unresectable, a third, 28% of them, were ultimately uh, uh, resected. And then this pa patient population, their median over overall survival was, was uh, uh, three years. 
Now, if you really want to do it right, if you really want to optimize resectability, quote the Olivia trial, unresectable metastatic colorectal cancer of the liver, full fox series with BEV versus full fox and BEV. Response rate, 81%. Who would have thought 20 years ago we would be talking about systemic therapy rates, response rates of 81%. I hope, I hope my pancreatic uh, uh, cancer medical oncologists are, are getting inspired by this data because 81% uh, is quite impressive with a resect uh, ultimate resectability of 61%, our zero resections, 49%. This is the population that needs neoadjuvant chemotherapy. Let's talk about parenchymal preservation. Preserving parenchyma is important because these patients are gonna recur where? They're gonna recur in the parenchyma, and that parenchyma needs to endure many, many, hopefully, years of systemic therapy. Um, so, so what? Chemotherapy associated state of hepatitis occurs after chemotherapy. Mostly it's associated with arenotecan, but it's really associated with nine cycles, more than nine cycles, uh, as published by Dr. Vote, who is by who was a mentor of my esteemed debate colleague, Dr. Snyder, where they serve chemotherapy in the water. And, and he said, and he found that this morbidity was mostly associated with greater than nine cycles of systemic therapy. So you may say, well, what about those lesions that disappear? What's gonna happen to those? Well, those are most often small, less than two centimeters, where you have a patient with multi, multiple lesions greater than three. They often present in a synchronous fashion. They've received oxaliplatin-based therapy, and they receive many cycles, at least eight, of systemic therapy. The best imaging modality up front, um, you see PET-CT has a very high specificity, very low sensitivity. But after they receive systemic therapy, it is really MRI that is our home run imaging modality to identify these lesions. If you add competent intraoperative ultrasound to that, the likelihood that you're gonna truly find these lesions intraoperatively is upwards of 90% in contemporary data. Don't look at the data that first came out in the early 2000s, look at contemporary data. And then your next question is, well, what if the lesion has disappeared? What happens next? Well, again, in contemporary data, the likelihood that you have an in situ recurrence is only seven to 15%. Those are odds I can get behind. And then R0 resection margins. So simple facts. I'm gonna channel Dr. Tran's extrapolation. R1 resection margins are associated with worse prognosis. Neoadjuvant chemotherapy shrinks tumors. Is neoadjuvant chemotherapy associated with a greater incidence of negative margins and hence better survival? Maybe, but extrapolation would lead you to that conclusion. So not a question of if, but a question of when. Assess biology, optimize resectability, preserve the parenchyma, don't worry about those disappearing colorectal liver metastases and get those R0 resection margins. This is our team at City of Hope and I miss Suzanne Warner. Thanks a lot, Dr. Cleary, <laughs> and thank you very much.